Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for The Great Mouse Detective, which came out in 1986. It's the seventh movie in Disney's Bronze Age and is directed by four people. That's right, four people. Two of them include the duo of Ron Clements and John Musker, who would go on to, as I've said several times, define Disney animation for my generation. So the movie is based off the series of kids' books, Basil of Baker Street, uh, which in itself is based off of Sherlock Holmes because it's pretty much the mouse equivalent to Sherlock Holmes. Uh, right down to the point where Basil is a downstairs neighbor to Sherlock Holmes himself. Uh, so that's incredibly meta. So this particular movie opens up with a little girl named Olivia Flubberspam, uh, Flower sham, whatever, whose father is a toy maker and is kidnapped by a bat with a crippled wing and a peg leg who works for the villainous Professor Rattigan. And she ends up looking for the great detective Basil of Baker Street uh, to help her get her dad back, a task that Basil does not want any part of until he finds out that Professor Rattigan is involved with her father's kidnapping. So with the help of Dr. Dawson, who had just returned from Afghanistan after serving in the Queen's 66th Regiment, not sure how a mouse is fighting in a war, but we'll just go with it. They are on the case to try to rescue Olivia's father and stop whatever evil scheme that Professor Radigan has planned. I mentioned this last week when I reviewed The Black Cauldron for the first time. This is my favorite Disney movie in the Bronze Age. And it's not a masterpiece by any means. It's not an amazing, mind-blowing, or even groundbreaking movie. I mean, to be honest, The Black Cauldron is more groundbreaking in terms of animation at the very least. But The Black Cauldron just lacked any charm or sense of fun and adventure. Everything that The Great Mouse Detective thankfully has. I mean, yes, it's very much the mouse equivalent of Sherlock Holmes, as I talked about earlier. But it still gets all the tropes down. It's a fun mystery. Both your main hero and your main villain are just wonderful. Basil himself is fun, eccentric, and as I I said very egotistical to the point where if he can't solve a case or if he feels like he's been outsmarted by someone else he will go into a flat-out depression and just say leave me alone I'm trying to be sad and it's a lot of fun to watch. Basil is voiced by Barry Ingham who does a really good job but maybe the biggest scene stealer out of this entire movie more than Basil himself is Professor Radigan voiced by Vincent Price. This is a villain that I don't think many people give credit to as much as they should. For one, he's not only voiced by a legendary actor but he's animated by Glenn Keane and just the combination of Vincent Price and Keane makes for a really memorable villain. And like Basil, Rattigan is very egotistical as well, but he tries to keep a calm manner. He's very over the top, but he's very elegant. At least, he acts that way because if he gets pushed over the edge, he will lose it and just let his animal instincts take over completely. Something that lends itself to a really great final climax of this movie between Basil and Radigan. I mean, the best way to sum up this hero-villain relationship is Sherlock Holmes and Moriarty. I mean, it's exactly that. And I can see some people looking at this movie going, oh, it's just a Sherlock Holmes knockoff, except they just renamed some of the characters. Uh, and I feel like this movie kind of admits that. Again, having Basil live right underneath Sherlock Holmes himself is kind of the movie going, yeah, we know this is essentially Sherlock Holmes with mice, but we're just gonna have fun with it no matter what. I think it's a much better Sherlock Holmes movie than Holmes and Watson. I even think it's better than Sherlock Holmes' A Game of Shadows from Guy Ritchie because it does everything that you'd expect from a Sherlock Holmes adventure very well and it's not just geared specifically towards kids. There are a few points, not a lot, where the movie can get really dark and uh, kind of violent. I mean, the opening scene of the movie is a straight-up kidnapping and the climax of the movie where Radigan just unleashes on Basil it's pretty brutal. Also, Radigan has a cat who is hugely obese, and he feeds henchmen who cross him to that cat. So, yeah, there are certainly things about this movie that aren't necessarily 100% kid-friendly, but I think that adds to the movie's charm. If I had any major complaints about this movie, and 
really, I think I'm saying major loosely, it's that the animation is not quite up to par with what the Black Cauldron did. Uh, which, the Black Cauldron, they spent a lot of money on that movie to make the animation as perfect as it is. Uh, and you can see it. With this movie, you can tell that the animation is not quite to that level, but it still gets the job done. Uh, there's no rough edges with the animation. The movements are very fluid. And again, having Glenn Keane be one of the animation directors definitely helps. Uh, and the whole sequence with inside Big Ben, where they use CG animation for all the gears, uh, is impressive. So at the end of the day, The Great Mouse Detective is just a lot of fun. It's got great characters, a fantastic villain, the action's exciting, the animation is decent, and it's got a great score from the legendary Henry Mancini, who scored movies like the Pink Panther films, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Charade. He's done a lot of great scores, and I think this is another one that sticks out to me. And also, it's a short movie. It doesn't really drag like Black Cauldron did. It starts exactly where it needs to and ends at the perfect moment. So I'd say The Great Mouse Detective is worth seeing in your lifetime. Like I said before, this is my favorite of the Disney Bronze Age movies and it's the only one that I would highly recommend. I mean there are movies like Winnie the Pooh, The Rescuers, and The Fox and the Hound that are really good as well, but if you only had to pick one movie from this era of Disney animation to watch, I'd recommend The Great Mouse Detective. And there you go, that's my review for The Great Mouse Detective. Now we just have one more movie left in this era and that's Oliver and Company, which like so many other Disney movies before it is one that I've seen snippets of but not the whole thing. But after that, after that we are finally getting into my era of Disney animation and again I think the one you all are waiting for me to get to. But we still have to get to Oliver and Company which we'll do next week. But first, I want to know what you guys think about The Great Mouse Detective. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just want to say thank you all for watching my review for The Great Mouse Detective. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button to get notifications. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.